Hello, and welcome to this Sequencer tutorial. Uh, Sequencer is Unreal's new cinematic tool that it gives you in replace of the old um, matinee system, which you can still access here. Uh, I think you'll find very quickly that the uh, Sequencer is much, much better than the matinee ever was. So. Over the next little while, I'm going to show you how to use it and hopefully get you familiar with some of the UI elements and some of the things that you can actually do with Sequencer. The first thing that you're going to need to do is uh, set up a scene that you w want to have a cinematic element in. So what I've got here, if you want to follow along, is just a brand new uh, third person uh, project here. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, delete the third person character, which is here. And we're going to go to uh, mannequin character mesh. And I'm just going to drag out a mannequin and, and drop him over here to <coughs> the left of the scene. So now we have uh, a, a guy in the scene that we can shoot. We can go ahead and start setting up the actual uh, sequence. Um, components that we're going to use. So if you go up here to the Cinematics tab, you can add a level sequence. Now a level sequence is a uh, self-contained asset that utilizes other assets in the scene, such as our actor here, which also includes other level sequences. And I'll show you exactly what that means uh, throughout the tutorial. So the first thing we're going to do, click here, is add a sequence. <coughs> And we're going to use this as our master sequence that draws on other sequences that we're going to shoot in order to make our final composition. So you are going to want to name this something that you will remember is your uh, master sequence. So we could call it master. Um, this is going to be the sequence that any blueprints in the level will access. So you could call it blueprint as well if uh, that is easier for you to remember what it's for. You could call it overlord or something similar, but we're gonna, we're just going to go ahead and call this master. So we're going to save that out. And automatically it's going to open up the sequencer UI. So I'm going to go over to this just really quickly. Uh, obviously here we have the save and save as. That'll save your sequence, your current sequencer uh, project. Over here we have the uh, magnifying glass which finds the current sequencer asset that you are working in in the uh, content browser. So if you go ahead and click that you can see down here in the content master folder it's just created our, our master here. <clears throat> this camera icon here creates a new camera and adds it to the sequence. Um, It'll also open it or put a camera in the world and your current viewport will be snapped to that camera and we are currently piloting that camera. So if we can just hit eject here really quick, we can turn around and see the new cinematic camera that was created. It's worth noting that uh, the camera that this uh, camera button puts out is a cinematic camera and not just a default camera. And uh, I'll go over what that means in just a little bit. So beside that, we have our render button. If we click that, it'll render out our current sequence and you can uh, set your settings and all that kind of stuff. Beside that, we have general options. So a lot of these are just kind of quality of life stuff, make things a little quicker. We have our key all channels. So when this is toggled on, um, that is going to make a keyframe on every single keyable attribute even if only one is changed. So for example, my uh, camera here, if I change the location of X, it's automatically going to put a keyframe for Y, Z, as well as the X, Y, Z in rotation and scale, even though none of those have changed. And this can be useful to avoid some unwanted or janky movement uh, over the entire timeline if one happens to change later down the road. So that can be quite useful. Over here we have the auto keying um, options. So here is, uh, is auto key all. And that means anytime there is a change uh, with an actor that this uh, sequencer draws on, it's just going to add a keyframe in every keyable component automatically. 
this can be useful for uh, if you're um, familiar with animating in Maya. A lot of animators will uh, animate with that feature turned on. Uh, auto key animated it does the same thing, except uh, it only targets uh, actors that have animation components tied to them. And there's disable auto key, which is on by default. So I'm just going to leave this off for now. Over here we can set our frame rate, and you have a wide variety of frame rates to choose from. We're going to go ahead and leave ours at 30. And the final button up here is the toggle to show animation keys in the animation editor. And those are useful for um, being able to smooth out your animations and make changes without going in and adjusting it in the scene. And uh, It can be a little bit tricky. <coughs> so down here we can see that we have our camera cuts track. The, this is the actual um, scene editor. You can make obviously cuts here. Uh, we have our actor here and its name. We can add a custom track to that actor and this little camera button here will pilot you to that camera. So I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way and pilot. And you can see we are now in control of that camera. So any movement I do uh, with the normal flying navigation in Unreal, it's going to translate that to the camera. And over here I can just hit the eject. And you can see that the cinematic has, camera has moved from up here to down here looking at our, uh, our mannequin over here. And then after that we just have uh, animation tracks, keyable elements on uh, different uh, aspects of the camera. So all of its transforms are here. You can set the and key the focal length and the current aperture. So it's worth noting that this sequencer can be moved and docked anywhere in the Unreal UI. Uh, I would suggest working with it um, in another monitor and having it off on your other monitor so you have complete access to the entire Unreal UI as well as the sequencer editor. But uh, in absence of a second monitor, or and for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to dock it down here beside our content browser. Okay, so let's go and find our master editor. Um, I've already created a folder here called sequencer. So I'm just going to move that into here to make everything more organized. And since this uh, master sequencer is going to contain our actual film snippets, we're not going to be editing cameras directly in this one. So what we're going to do now is create a second film uh, sequencer, which will actually contain our camera animations and all that kind of thing. And uh, there are several ways we can do that. So you can right click and uh, duplicate this. And that will allow you to rename it. You can go back up to cinematics and add a second level sequencer. Or you can right click, go to the animation drop down. And then over here we have another level sequence. So we're going to just select that. And uh, we're going to call this something that we'll recognize. So it could be scene one, cam one, or, or you know, whatever you're going to remember it. But we're just going to put shot underscore zero one. Uh, there is an important note that uh, I figured out the hard way. It's very critical that you end your naming convention with an actual number. And um, I am currently working on version 4.13 of the Unreal Editor, and I'm not entirely sure if it's a bug, but if you end your naming sequence with a uh, with a with an actual, you know, letter or name, there is a feature down the road called uh, takes, which will not work properly. So it has to, to have a uh, numeric value f at the end of its naming convention. So we're going to open up that sequencer here. We are going to add a new camera, and uh, to make our life a lot easier, we are going to go to the drop down here and go to layouts, and we're going to select a two pane layout. Uh, we're going to go from this top view to perspective, 
and one of these viewports we are going to turn into a cinematic view and uh, that's important because it will um, directly show us what our uh, finished cinematic will look like so you do that by going to the perspective tab and at the bottom here you can just click cinematic view and you'll see that you get all the controls that you would have in the sequence editor in your actual uh, viewport here <coughs> So now we have our master sequencer, which is in the level right here. We have our shot sequencer, which we are going to use to shoot film and make our actual cut. And we have our viewport set up in a, a way that we can easily access every component that we need to. So the next part I will go over with you is uh, the different cameras and how those work and how you can use those to create your different shots.